In the last video, we talked about what does it mean to run a t-test. And I've noticed some of you are still struggling with the idea of assumptions. So let's talk about that a little bit. So how do you check assumptions for a t-test in SPSS? And then, of course, the natural question is, well, what are those assumptions? So first of all, the assumptions are to, number one, check independence within and between samples. Number two, that each sample independently is approximately normally distributed. And the third assumption is that the two sample variances are basically the same, that there's not big differences in the variances of those samples. <coughs> so if we go to SPSS, And if we're using the same idea as last time that in the last video, where we're checking the difference between custom versus non-custom roller coasters on their intensity, then the thing that we want to worry about, first of all, independence, there's not an easy way to test that with statistics. But what we can do is think about the context in which these things happen. So if you think about um, custom versus non-custom roller coasters. Is there any reason to think that the custom roller coasters and the non-custom roller coasters somehow have a relationship between them from some other thing that has happened? So the way I usually think about this is, for some reason, is there reason to believe that a custom roller coaster might have an intensity level for a similar reason that a non-custom roller coaster does. I don't think that I can think of a reason why that might be the case, except that the fact that they're all housed within the possibilities of the environment in which Roller Coaster Tycoon has a programming language. However, in general, we think about the person making the roller coasters um, is not the same person that made the non-custom roller coasters. So I think there's independence between these two groups. Within a group, you could also ask yourself, is there a reason to believe that one roller coaster's intensity might be related to another's? And this is where it might get a little sticky, especially since there's been some discussion around the custom roller coasters perhaps having a kitty park. If that's the case, the roller coasters inside that park are probably going to have smaller intensity ratings because they are more similar to one another. However, if we um, look at it as a whole, maybe that's not as big of an issue, but it seems like it's possible that there are pockets of places within the park in which certain, in which the roller coasters in that area may be more similar to one another than roller coasters in another part of the park because of their location or the theme of that location, right? So there is a possible issue there that I see within um, that there may be some dependence issues. However, for now, we're going to continue with this, but it's important to note that that could be problematic. So the other two things we can uh, examine statistically. The first thing we want to look at is normality, and you can do that by going to Analyze, Descriptive Stats, and Explore. And we're going to put the custom design in the factor list and the intensity rating in the dependent list. Under Statistics, we can leave that alone. The important thing here is that we get the appropriate plots. We want to see a histogram, and we want to see the normality plots with tests. Under options, we know that we want to keep this as exclude cases list-wise, although we also know that there's nothing missing. Alright, the important thing is going to be looking at skewness and kurtosis, the histograms, the normality plots, and the tests. So if we look at the skewness or kurtosis levels here, they're both within plus or minus 2 for intensity of non-custom. The custom created coasters <coughs> have a 
have a bit of a problematic issue happening. Um, skewness and kurtosis values are well beyond what they should be. A kurtosis value of 77, I don't think I've ever seen one that high. Uh, but definitely beyond the range of negative to positive 2. So likelihood of um, this assumption not being true is very high right now. If we look at the test of normality, the default video games, we see a significance value that's pretty high, a p-value that's pretty high, 0.2, and 0 0.07 for the Shapiro-Wilk. Both of those are telling us about the same thing. Um, and if we look at the custom coasters, though, we see p-values that are too small. Um, if you double-click on this, though, you can actually see what the value is if you hover over it. So you can see 4.2 e-19. What that means is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 19. Basically, take the decimal point and move it 19 places to the left. That's what it looks like. So there are 18 zeros before you see the first number. Um, over here, same thing, 2.08 times 10 to the negative 23. So those are extremely small values, p-values that are essentially zero, which tells you that the custom created coaster is probably not meeting the assumption of normality. Let's look at the histograms to help us validate some of this. Um, custom design or um, non-custom design roller coaster is kind of an awkward looking histogram. You can see why it's not um, it doesn't look like there's any big skewness involved. So uh, we kind of defer back to here and see that probably there isn't a big issue with the skewness or kurtosis values, test of normality. Um, <coughs> of course, if we look at the histogram for custom design roller coasters, we see one of the major problems. There is a single, what looks like a single roller coaster. Let's see if I can double click on this and um, I hover over this. It's still not telling me the exact height. Um, but this looks like one roller coaster out here is one of the major reasons why we have a problem. It has a very high intensity rating of 40 something, right? And so one option to fix this could be to simply remove that from analysis and reevaluate this set of roller coasters here, which ranges from around 0 to 10, and see if there is uh, a better sense of normality here. My guess is there's still some normality issues because this bar is so high. However, once this bar is removed on the far right, these bars can um, be split up so that maybe that isn't so high and probably it's going to look a little nicer. Let's look at the QQ plot for the non-custom. Looks pretty good. Things are largely close to this line of what it would be expected if it was normally distributed. But here you see that this is very, very different. And this set over here even, now that line is much, much steeper than it should be. So there's definitely an issue with normality. Once we remove this point here, there might be a better sense of normality. And we see the box plots. The box plots can help us understand what would happen if we removed the outlier. So this outlier here, roller coaster number 142, with a value around 45, if you look at the rest of this, it looks pretty symmetric. A couple of outliers on the low end. Um, it, it's still hard to tell how if that would be normally distributed, but it definitely looks like it probably is going to be pretty close. All right, so without removing that point, if we just move on and think about the um, analysis, moving forward, you would s um, 
we have now seen that there seems to be a potential issue with independence within a sample. There seems to be a normality issue with the custom created roller coasters. And removing that point could result in making this no longer normal uh, or abnormal. However, you have to have a good reason for removing it. You can't just remove it just because you want to. And the thing we haven't tested for yet is equality of variances. And the way that you do this is by running the test. It is one of the outputs that is spit out automatically. And I picked the wrong thing here. Analyze, compare means, independent samples, t-test. So we'll put custom design as the grouping variable and intensity as the test variable. And we have to define the groups. And I put this in my last video on t-test. So if you want, I, I explain this a little more. I'm going to leave this alone. Okay. So here, you can now see the test for equality of variances, significance of 0 0.462, that's the p-value. And if you look at the standard deviation, it looks like that's not, um, they look like they're really different. Turns out they're not as different as they appear. Part of that is based on um, the variances being compared based on the sample sizes are, are factored into that. Okay, and then since this p this p value is telling you um, not to reject the null hypothesis, which in this case is that the variances are equal, p value is big. Therefore, we use the top row and we say we've met the assumption of equal variances. All right, that's all I have for this video. Um, focused on assumptions. Let me know in Discord how things are going.